Okay, um, those practicing for the academic decathlon or um, those uh, who are on the team just want to go over the questions that you see in the practice test. Uh, it, it, the first question asks you how many irrational numbers there are. And uh, sorry, I scratched it out. I was thinking something else. Irrational. That's what they are asking for. How many irrational? Remember, irrational numbers cannot be written as fractions. So that is definitely out right there. And um, or whole numbers or integers of any sort. So cube root of eight is two. Cube root of tw or square root of twenty-five is five. Those are all out because those are all rational numbers. Okay. Also, rational numbers can be either repeating decimals or terminating decimals. This is a terminating decimal because it ends. Actually, 5 and, and 2 are both terminating decimals as well. However, anything that cannot be written as a fraction, like the square root of 11, that's, that's a prime number. Square root of a prime number is never going to be a nice number. And, uh, in fact, the square root of any uh, non-perfect square, like the square root of 2. Plus, even if you add the number 2, you still have an irrational number. Even if you take a, a ras an irrational number like radical 5 and divide by 5, it's still going to be irrational. And pi, obviously, is irrational. It goes on forever. So there are four different numbers in this particular group. In question two, I had to start messing around with the graph. Uh, for instance, um, <clears throat> I know that on one side of the equation, this is a fixed number, negative two. That's like a horizontal line. So you can see that I've, I've drawn y equals negative 2 in the second graph there. The other side is going to be a quadratic. And so we just want to really see when these things are going to touch each other. And um, for lack of a better or a quicker solution, I am going to take the answers and start plugging them in. So for instance, uh, I started with um, plugging in a 2. Now remember, it has to have one real solution. So we're looking for when the quadratic touches the horizontal line but only in one spot. So zoom 6 will give me the standard window there and I can see that clearly it has missed the graph. Okay, it has to have one real solution. Okay, so that's not a good choice. I could try a negative radical 2. So I'll go back in here and we want uh, negative square root 2 and we'll graph that. Okay, and nope, they don't touch. They don't touch at all. Okay, so that's a bad choice. Uh, we'll try radical 3. Square root 3. There's my graph. There's my line. They don't cross at all. So that's a bad choice. Um, 1 plus radical 6 isn't going to work either, but if you try 2 radical 2, 2 square root 2, and graph those, you're going to see that the line comes down. Now, just to clarify that 1 is touching in only one point, not two points, um, let's do a zoom in feature. So zoom in, and then we're going to use the cursor and go down to where we think it's close. And you can see the blinking cursor and hit the enter button and it will reorient the graph and give us and I am more convinced now that it only touches in one spot. Okay? If I feel like I really want to test it out and I hit enter button again, it'll draw another window. And so now I'm really zooming in to see and it still only looks like it touches it in one spot. So I'm happy about that. Okay? So I know it's too radical too. On the next question I'm cross multiplying. Okay. Now, I took this one right here and I put it in here for f of x. Okay, so you can see that I did that right there. And then I cross multiplied because, you know, that's what we do. It's one over one, right? 
1 over 1. I cross multiplied and then I started solving and I got an x value of negative 4. Now keep in mind that is a plus 1. And so once you find the negative 4, you've got to subtract 1 to find the real answer. Find the inverse of? Well, remember, to find an inverse, right? We, uh, this is y equals 3 to the x plus 1 minus 9. We have to switch x and y. And then we start solving for y. So obviously, we're going to add 9 to the other side. So we have x plus 9 equals 3 to the y plus 1. Of course, this is where logarithms come into play because you're trying to solve for an exponent, and a logarithm is an exponent. So uh, the base is 3. The argument is x plus 9, and the exponent that it equals is y plus 1. So log base 3 of x plus 9 equals y plus 1. Therefore, all we need to do is subtract the 1 to find choice D on our list of equations. Okay, uh, and that concludes questions 1 through 4, and I'm going to go eat some lunch, and I'll come back later today to finish more problems for you.